Hi, welcome. This is Tara Preston from the Akashic Women's School. And I'm here today with Brandy LaDuke. We thought it would be really nice this cozy new moon to connect for a sister soul chat. Um, I love the work that Brandy's doing in the world. And she's also been a really beautiful friend and student of the Akashic Women's School. So she's done the Flower of Life Akashic Healing Certification. But we just thought it'd be really nice to come together and probably inspiring to have Brandy share a little bit about her own journey and the work that she's doing in the world and share a little bit about um, the Flower of Life um, method and how that's being woven into her work in the world as well. So welcome, Brandy. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So Brandy is an empowerment and soul purpose guide for awakening women. And we were just talking about this before we jumped on the call around sometimes you're really trying to illuminate and give like the full clarity of the of the fullness of the work that we're here to do in the world is challenging sometimes but brandy is an empowerment and soul purpose guide for awakening women and she has a deep toolbox so i'm going to hand it over to brandy and just have her share a little bit about the different tools that she's working with um and you know she's been on this path for a while so yeah Thanks, Tara. Yeah, so I guess a couple years ago, um, I got started working with plant medicine for my own journey, finding my own soul path, um, which connected me to that work and working with plant medicine. And I saw how powerful it was to really deepen our connection to our hearts and bringing us back to like, who am I? why am I here and how am I here to serve and so that was a really big part of my journey and connecting more me more deeply to my heart space and not long after that I was connected to your certificate and the flower of life pathway and how that played into my life and like clearing blocks and opening up my pathway for the work that I am here to usher in on the, into the world. Mm -hmm. um, I love speaking and working with women around really truly who they are meant to be in this world and why they are here and just connecting them back to that space inside of them because as a collective, we're so disconnected. As mothers, we're so busy. We don't make that time for ourselves to deepen in and I, I feel like a lot of women are being called right now to that more like what like what is that more that I am here to contribute to just the overall collective of like the healing on the planet and so oh that's so beautiful that's so beautiful I want to go back a little bit to your plant medicine um pathway and that kind of intersection on your path where you started to have a relationship with the plants and what started you've touched on it a little bit but I'd just be curious about curious about like the significance of that time and what you really started to discover about yourself and how the plants played a, a part in that yeah so I I guess I was I was really at a point in my life where I did not trust my path I was very unclear and I was trying on all of these things and I had just gone through a spiritual business program and I came out the other end of it. And the only thing I came out the other end of it with was um, the journey back to the heart. And that was kind of it. And I was like, I don't have a modality and I don't have this. And all these, all these beliefs were coming up around why I couldn't move forward. And so I was intuitively guided to working with both cacao and uh, psilocybin mushrooms and doing just um kind of like a more sacred plant medicine journey like you would go down to the jungles and do like an ayahuasca journey and so I created a very clear intention around why I was working with the medicine what I was hoping to connect with and the vision that came through from that journey was very large and quite bigger than 
than me. And when I came back, I guess down to earth, if you will. Yeah. Um, I was kind of like, oh my God, holy, holy crap. <laughs> Because it was it was working with plant medicine, and I had asked a couple of people in the field, like, is this normal? And it's like, yeah, when like when plant medicine calls you to work with it, it calls you. And so shortly after that, there was a plant medicine summit that came up, and of course they offered a program on the end of that. And I was I was in there before you could like before they could even say yeah. that this is a thing. I was just like, I'm in. This is where I'm meant to be. And yeah. I love that. Can you speak a little bit to how you still continue to use plant medicine for your path? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I work with cacao quite frequently. Um, Usually in my morning ritual, I'll have a cup of cacao and I connect with her and I connect her to my heart space. And I just listen to the wisdom that comes through. And if there's any messages for me, um I also work with cacao in women's circles I've started Mm -hmm. that which has been really beautiful and healing um and then I do microdosing with mushrooms different Mm -hmm. protocols Mm -hmm. and as well as I do larger journeys for larger insights but those are less frequent because you're not supposed to do them frequently (laughs) you can Mm -hmm. probably blow your nervous system and The amount of insights that come through from one journey take time to integrate. Like, so when you're doing them over and over and over again, you're not truly integrating the teachings of what's coming through. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely an important part. And when you talk about using cacao in your women's circles, what do you feel like, how does that contribute to like the circle and the experiences that the women are having? I feel that, again, like, I feel like we're so busy and so go, go, go. And it's like, it's an aspect that helps us slow down and connect to and open up our heart space to truly listen to the messages that are meant for us and allows us to open up more fully and be more vulnerable be okay mm-hmm. with being more vulnerable and being witnessed and seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's so much love in that place, you know, and facilitates like such a deep connection. Yeah. That's that's beautiful. And the training that you took was quite comprehensive, right? Like it was really deep. And I know you are, you know, in the future, you're, you have a vision of bringing forward some group uh, plant medicine journey but yeah just tell us a little bit because it is really fascinating and we're hearing more and more about plant medicine and I know that this is a journey that you took very serious and that you dedicated a lot of time and focus so yeah share a little bit about what that was like um I guess like what's coming to mind is like it was like drinking from a fire hose um opening up to the plant medicine world as like a newbie was like it's it's a it's a whole other world of healing and it it's just it takes you to these these depths and there was there was so much we had to cover in that eight month period where it's like being trauma informed and um you know uh sitting with different shaman on like learning about like the medicine wheel or being in right relationship with the plants, being in right relationship with the land, Um, like sacred reciprocity. And um, oh my goodness, there was- That's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah, and there's so much depth and there's so much integrity. And I think that's like a really important piece when we're working with plant medicine specifically in the way that you you know you space hold and and guide with plant medicine so I'm glad I asked that's that's amazing so on your path as you and then I know you were drawn to the the Akashic Records and um, one of the reasons I asked Brandy to join me in this conversation is because of her devotion and and her love of the flower of life method and the Akashic Records and I thought it would just be really nice for you to share on how 
that pathway has supported you in your own journey and, and how you see it touching your clients as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so it was about a year and a half ago that we got connected and I really believe that it has supported me in becoming a more empowered, embodied individual and like just being being more like sovereign in my like beliefs and my like standards and my boundaries and trusting myself more and believing in myself more it's it's helped me go through some really hard times in my life that I think helped like I what, what am I trying to say like condense the timeline of that healing Mm. and then growing exponentially in my business where it's like this work is so much so needed like Mm -hmm. there's so much empowerment in in this work and how it supports women and just witnessing them in and in and like um illuminating um their path for them and and mirroring like their beauty and their essence and who they're called to be I don't know if that makes sense yeah I love that (laughs) that's beautiful yeah well you're just bringing forth the wisdom um from your experience and uh yeah I mean I feel like that to me is the work and I love personally that you have found it to be helpful in navigating your path. That is a huge piece I find with the Akashic records and that we can come back to that place. It's not that the Akashic records necessarily tell us what to do, but it's a way to get such deep clarity for our soul level path. And then to be able to untangle the things that don't serve, I think that's where the realignment and then the acceleration comes from. Like we can, I find even now, still I can transmute a lot quick, more quickly instead of looping through some stuff. So Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And I love that. And I know that you've been stepping out, you know, on your path with your medicine and your work, and you've been serving and supporting women and how we're just recently, because our work shifts and it changes, it grows and it evolves as we shift, change, grow and evolve. But just like over the last, you know, couple of months, where have you found that your work is really supporting and meeting women at this point? who's been showing up um who has been showing up in my field are women who are their gifts are coming online or they've been aware but they haven't had the confidence or belief to step in fully or there's Mm -hmm. been like fears or beliefs or conditioning that's been holding them back from trusting that like that's the path they're meant to be walking on Mm -hmm. and it is beautiful like it's just it's so beautiful the insights and um support that like comes through in the akasha and how it holds women and um just like the feedback from how they feel afterwards from sitting in one of those sessions is Mm -hmm. so beautiful that's amazing I have one last question for you and it's actually around boundaries. You mentioned, you know, you know, with the Akashic records and I'm sure just a natural part of your own journey, really understanding where your boundaries needed to upgrade. And I know from working with women that that's a part of stepping into our sovereignty, but I'd just be curious if you could share a little bit because it's a really important piece for the awakening woman's journey. And it's sometimes a, p- a piece that women really push up against is, mm-hmm. is understanding how boundaries can support them. Can you share a little bit of, on like, you know, where, who you were, or what you noticed when you're, when certain boundaries weren't intact and, and how you grew in that place of upholding new boundaries and, and how that supported you? Um, if you have the capacity to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good question. Um, I feel like I was, I feel like I am a recovered people pleaser and still a recovering people pleaser. I'm starting yeah. to learn. Yeah. Um, as someone who walks like the path of 
the healer, we naturally want to be able to serve and help everybody. And so we draw that in, like our energy just draws that in. And it's like, you know, you start to like, it's okay, like just this one person or that one person. And then it's like, then it becomes many. And then your your energy is just spread out way too thin. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, it's calling that back in and it's being okay with like, I don't need to give from this place and I don't need to prove to people that like I'm worthy of love by, by over giving or over supporting. It's like, you can support them in a healthy way and still be there for them without over giving yourself. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, yeah, this is like a really good conversation actually. And I think you're right. It's it for women who, you know, the helpers and the healers and, you know, I often in the very been doing this now for a very long time, but I would attract women. And this is the part of my journey too, but the imbalance of like giving love and learning to receive love uh, from self and also recognizing where my capacity was at. And then my ability to identify where it was okay to say no, because I needed to take care of me first so that my cup was full so that I could learn to serve from a different place, which mm -hmm. actually impacted my energy, me in the home, my business, like all kinds of things. So just yeah. to mirror that back, I just think it's, it's a really important piece that a lot of women struggle with. And I um, think the more that we can illuminate that it's okay to continue to honor ourselves and, and recognize where we're at capacity. Um, yeah. And you and I had powerful. sort of touched on this the other day and it's like, you know, we're in this, we're in this place where like, we get to go first, we lead by example, and we, we show other people um, how to have those healthy boundaries. And we show the people in our lives. Yeah, how to have those healthy boundaries and how to show up that way. So when we're energetically operating from that place, then they show up and, and hopefully meet us there. And if they don't, then yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if they don't, that's okay. But it becomes important to be able to role model that it's okay to choose ourselves and to put our own energy and love and capacity first. Um, and just as a final note, I think that's where the Akashic Records too, for me, and I see it with clients all the time. And I'm sure this is a way that you support your clients is that I find the Akashic records like really illuminate like those people pleasing patterns or where we've been like giving away from like caretaking contracts or different healing contracts or packs. Right. And so then we get that deep, like soul level clarity of where we've been operating in these patterns that don't serve us and we can clear it. And then we can identify and create space for more of the honoring of the way that we want to um, move through the world so yeah I feel like that's like and and that's where these two really merge for me is like they're both like plant medicine and the Akasha are so aligned in that way where it's like plant medicine you're working with like the neural pathways of rewiring a new way of being and then the Akasha you're working on like the soul level which I think both plant medicine and the Akasha work on a soul level to rewire but oh for sure yeah this, yeah I'm really excited yeah. to be together <laughs> yeah it's really really beautiful absolutely and coming from the flower of life pathway, the way that I've created it was so that it could be woven with, you know, different tools, but also be the unique expression of your medicine and your wisdom. And you embody that so beautifully, Brandy. So thank you for coming on and sharing with us. Um, and is there just any, and if you feel complete, that's great. But if there's just any last um, bits of wisdom or anything final you want to share, please take a moment and do so. Hmm. Um, maybe just like if you are a woman and you're on the path or you're like dabbling with the idea of stepping on to your like true path like just to go for it and trust that inner nudge from your heart and just to take moments throughout your day and just listen to your heart space more because that truly is like the portal to the truth of who 
you are and who you're meant to be here on this planet mm -hmm. at this time. Beautiful. I love that. Well, thank you so much. Um, you can find Brandy on Facebook. I will put her Facebook link and I know you're working on the birth of your new website. I'm not quite here yet. Um, but yeah, so make sure to reach out and follow Brandy and thank you for joining us. Have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you soon.